and good day and welcome back here to golf ticket presents the cape town club cricket league and we're busy with match number 30 and this is the all-important eliminator that between powerful cricket club sponsored by bet brick seven and victoria cricket club sponsored by Creek Hutter. the winner of this game is going to go through tomorrow and face ronda boss cricket club the loser unfortunately their tournament will come to an end as we look at that's the points table and as you can see three versus four there victoria creek club versus Belleville, and they have fought their way fought their way into this the playoff positions here and this is where they find themselves in this eliminator now we all can talk about Belleville creek club they were they lost three of their four games and then they just keep coming and kept getting wins as we look at that chart there where we just had Durbanville Cricket Club they advanced straight through to Sunday's final Rondebos Cricket Club have to come back tomorrow and they have to play the winner of this eliminator between Victoria Cricket Club and Belleville Cricket Club so a lot to play for for this team today conditions are really good out there and earlier I was out there to do a pitch report as well as a toss And welcome here to the Golf Ticket Presents, the Cape Town Club Cricket League T10. We're busy with match number 30, and it is the Eliminator. The Eliminator is a match between Belleville Creek Club, sponsored by Bed Brick 7, and they're going to be up against Victoria Creek Club, sponsored by Creek Adder. This is for a place in Qualify 2 tomorrow, and we know who they're going to be facing. It's going to be Rondebos Creek Club, who they'll be facing tomorrow. Just a little bit on the pitch. Now, this is the same pitch we use for that qualifier one earlier today and it's still a lot better from what it started out at 10 o'clock this morning this pitch has dried out of moisture it looks rock hard it looks a good batting strip it looks like the ball's going to come on and a little bit better for the batters as well however spinners might play a key too because this wicket has dried out they might play uh, they might play a role as well in this game we saw a little bit of turn and bounce as well from the left on spinners of durban the club earlier so I think that's going to also play a part. No breeze to talk about. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the toss. Are we going to see something different with the team winning the toss is going to bat? Or are we going to see the same as teams that won the toss? They've always elected to bowl. And here we are at the all-important eliminator match 30 between these two teams. Victoria Cricket Club sponsored by Craig Carter, And it's Belleville. Cricket Club sponsored by Bet Brick 7. The winner of this game goes through to tomorrow to face Durbanville Cricket Club in Qualifier 2. So all to play for in this, this knockout match. So it's going to be Warwick representing Victoria. He's going to toss the coin. He's going to be Cody to call. Tails. Tails is the call. And Tails it is, I think. So Cody, if you join me here, you've won the toss. What are you elected to do? Just a standard ball first day. <laughs> well, it just seems like it's gone from anything before, but this is now a knockout. This is be all and end all now for you. If you lose today, you go out. If you win today, you go through to that qualifier tomorrow. So all to play for. All to play for, yes. That's why we're sticking to our guns. We're doing what we've been doing all tournament and sticking with the ball first. Have you still got the same team? Is there any changes to your team coming into this important match? Yes, we have a few changes. I know Kronier is out and we have subbed in Tian Sardane for Kian. So we can obviously miss Corona because he's in England, but we've got a big, some big boots to fill there with the extra seamer. So very well done to try for your club to get to this position where you are in this eliminator. Definitely. I'm very happy for the club, very happy with the team, and I appreciate all the support from the supporters. Listen, go well today. Thank you. Warwick, just a word from you. I know you lost a toss. Would that, would that have changed anything that if you had to win the toss? No, no, we would have batted first. Uh, I think 10 overs in itself is, is already a lot of pressure, so I think we want to add to that with uh, some good runs on the scoreboard. This wicket looks really good. It looks like there's a lot of runs in it. Yes, it does. I was watching the first game. Um, very good game to watch, um, but I definitely think in the afternoon, Durban will put runs on the board and get them under pressure later. So you're going for scoreboard pressure in this all-important match? Yes, definitely. We want to get 100+, uh, plus, uh, and I think that will that'll be enough for our bowlers to defend. Any changes to your team? Uh, so yes, Marco Weingard, the captain, uh, he's back. He'll be a bit late. Uh, Dayan Beardin, who I think is our top, we could take a, um, the airbender he calls himself. <laughs> okay. um, he's, uh, he's also out. Uh, and then Ismail Prince is also out. Uh, so we have Duri Masino who will be standing behind the sums today. So a few key men not here for you. Yes, definitely. Uh, it's a pity, but uh, you know, education comes first. So those boys will be writing exams. Hopefully we can win it for them. No, go well today. Thank you.
That's the news here at the Toss, where Belleville Cricket Club, sponsored by Best Brick 7, they have won the Toss, and they've elected to bowl first against Victoria Cricket Club, sponsored by Cricket. And that was the outcome at the Toss earlier between these two teams, Belleville Cricket Club, sponsored by Bet Brick 7, and Victoria Cricket Club, sponsored by Cricket Club, Belleville. Just going by what we've seen before, winning the Toss and elected to having a bowl, and there's their side, Andrew. He's had a, an, a really good tournament as well. Really taking the attack to the team, scoring loads of runs. As we see, he's occupying the fourth spot in the amount of runs scored. It's not the amount of runs that he has scored. It's his impressive strike rate of 211 that he has brought to the party. There we see the umpires making their way out to the middle for this all-important Eliminate a match here, an umpire sponsored by ID247. They followed out there by Victoria Cricket Club. They in blue and Belleville Cricket Club. And by the sounds of it, looks like they've brought a few of their spectators around for this important clash. And one can just take our hats off to Belleville Cricket Club and how they have really battled their way. They really battled their way to get into this playoff. As I said, after four games, they lost three. They lost three out of four, and they managed to get the few victories and all important victories in the back end of their league campaign. And these two, for me, Quinton Dreyer and Justin Pringle, two men I feel that can really take the game away from any bowling attack. Justin Pringle yet to get going in this competition. He's shown glimpses of what he's capable of. He's called the big tasty. And I hope... We can certainly see sometime, maybe today, or maybe in times to come, what he's capable of as, as to why he's called the Big Tasty. And there's the man, Quinny Dreyer. His fir the first match he played, he played a very good innings. Really led Victoria to that win. It's going to be Blake. To start us off here. He's only got two wickets to show for us here. But he's bowled nicely. I have to say. In the three matches that he's had so far. And he's going to be bowling to Quinton Dreyer. The field that he's got. The two men out. There's a sweep on the offside. And a man down at long on. So it looks like we're all set. For this match number 30. And it's all important. Eliminator. Who's going to go through to qualify too to face Rondebosch Cricket Club tomorrow? Is it going to be Belleville? Is it going to be Victoria Cricket Club? Few people already hedging which way they're going. I'm not so sure. There's ball number one. It was a little bit wide outside the off stump, but we are up and running here. I know Victoria is up and running, but I'm not sure if some of the people, the main people in this game, the people that should be sweeping the score, they're not up to it yet. They're still very much in celebratory mood from yesterday's Eid Mubarak. That's to you. That middle. Oh, it's going to be the big tasty. He's going to face up here to Blake now. That's a ball down the leg side. That's a ball down the leg side. Oh, two dot balls, two dot balls by Blake, and this is a very, very steady start. I think that's very ambitious. That's extremely ambitious there from the youngster, but it is an all-important dot ball. It's an all-important dot ball. And 
this is what Balva Creek Club have done so well. Ball pitching way out to leg stump. So three balls to go now. Score on two. It's another change in the field as they bring the sweeper from the offside. He's come up now and they've got the deep mid wicket in place. And again, that's a big appeal. Big taste is down the wicket. Oh, and he missed the stumps. There was a chance for a run out. It's that man, Jai, the magpie, Loff. He had a two and a half stumps to throw at. Again, Blake, again, the ball was sort of pitching. He's come down the wicket. It was a good shot that time. Unfortunately, umpire says not out. Pitching outside the leg stump. That's picked up by. That's picked up beautifully by Quentin Dre. And that's going to be the first boundary. The first boundary of this eliminator goes in the way of Quentin Dre. What's the response going to be here from Blake? He's gone for six. Off the bat, scores seven. He advances down the wicket again. It's just going to be one. So that's going to be the over up. And that concludes that over with a score eight without loss. As we look at this, the batting card of Victoria Cricket Club here, Justin Pringle. The big tasty Quinton, Randy Dreyer, he's also there. They've got the likes of Marco Weingard, he's still to come. A few boys that hit lusty blows. Warwick as well, the last time out, hit a few lusty blows. And it's going to be that man, Jai, the magpie, Joff. Olof, he's going to come into the attack here. And with me, just to join us possibly for one or two overs, is that man, Jody Lawrence, who sort of spearheaded his team Durbanville into that final that we're going to see here on Sunday so firstly I will say congratulations on the final there Jody must be a little bit feeling a little bit at ease now knowing that you guys are in that final yeah good afternoon Eugene um, it was quite a I could say a good game you know um, but um, leading the attack for, 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 for Durbanville it's pretty simple the magpie he comes in it's just going to be one to quinny and that's good they just keep finding a way you, you make it sound as if it's that simple but what you guys have got such a variety in your attack anybody can open the bowling at any given time yeah cricket is quite a simple game um at durbanville we we have uh, a lot of guys that um come through quite a bit so anybody can actually open the bowling like you say cricket's a simple game you say that is quite pretty sure what I said. Cricket is very simple. We as humans, we make it very, very difficult for ourselves. I'll come back to that after this ball by the Magpie Loft. Yeah, it's going to bowl to the big tasty. The big tasty. The two fielders out. Sweep on the offside. Long off. So the, we can suggest that the ball is going to be, should be, wide out at off stump. In fact, it's quite a tight line on the stumps. Every dot's being applauded. I was very surprised by, I think, Ruben Senegal. He indicated that he would have batted as well. The wicket seemed like it was a little bit juicy up front with a little bit of moisture. But you guys got through that initial period and got a good total. Yeah, Ruben is a uh, captain that obviously comes through very much of a young guy, but also... Yes, that is picked up. That is picked up nicely by... The big tasty. I said, the field that Loff has set here indicate to me that it should be wide out at off stump. But no, he decides I'm not going to do that. I'm going to bowl on his legs. And there's nobody outside there on the leg side boundary. And that has gone for four. He's 
gone again. He's gone again. He's going to be back as back-to-back -back boundaries. Now then, Jody, what sort of thing goes through your head if you're the bowler and you've been hit for two fours like that? Well, Eugene, you see, uh, being hit for two fours in one over, it's, it's fine for the batter to hit the bowler for two fours. But uh, it depends on the bowler himself that has to think about where he has to bowl the next ball. Um, for every single bowler out there, I would suggest hard back of a length to any batter out there that has been hit for two fours. It's a big appeal, and I think that's very, very ambitious. The magpie loft, arms aloft. I'm not sure the umpire is going to give that because, as you can see, I mean, even if you put another set of stumps, it would have been outside the line. But, yeah, as you say, yeah, you just got to love every ball, especially in the, t in the shorter formats of the game. And this, T10, if you've been hit for four, you got to try and put that behind you and then focus on the next ball. Yeah, you just got to walk back to your marker again and just come back stronger the next ball again. Big hit. He's going to go all the way. That's gone one bounce for the big tasty is up for this. He said to me there he's looking to get going in this competition. Hopefully this is the start of things to come. Maybe it's a little bit preempting a little bit because you guys, Dublin Cricket Club, as well as Rondebos Cricket Club, you guys have set the benchmark as well, finishing first and second. Rondebos have to get through and eliminate the, or po apologies, uh, qualify tomorrow. And the winner of this game is going to face them. Any one of those teams that you fancy, you guys fancy potentially in that final, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter, but uh, we would like to get Rondebos again, if I could say that. <laughs> We'd like to get them again, um, but anybody that beats Rondebos tomorrow will be a big plus for us. Beautiful shot by Quinny Dreyer through the covers on the offside. And is this something? Is this setting the tone here for Victoria Career Club to amass a big total? It's a must win game. Cameron, he's come into the attack. Gives himself a little bit of room and sort of hit it into the swing. Beautiful shot. Beautiful shot by Quinny Dreyer. Oh, now it goes... He tries to go short and back of a length and just misses out. Yeah, I'm sure you guys will want to go. You guys are 1-1, one, one, isn't it? That is correct. 1-1 one, one is best out of three, I could, if I could say. I'm sure any of these two teams might have something to say about that come tomorrow. I tell you. He's gone back of a length. He's picked that up. Nice then. Hit it into the offside. It's just going to be one. Fielding done there by Blake. Yeah, you're sort of getting looks here from the men on my right here in blue with your comments of, yeah, well, well, we want Rondebos back in that final. See, they've gone quiet. Now you're just getting daggers, mate. Well, that, that's fine. That's fine. Um, like I said, we would like Rondebos in the final, but i um, pretty sure that uh, Victoria can obviously come through by uh, now, now beating you, anybody. Now you're forgetting about Belleville, mate. Well, Belleville can also come through. But um, looks like Victoria's uh, on the on the money today. Even at this early stage, Cameron, big tasty, big tasty, big tasty. That's another four for the big guy. You say Victoria looks well up for it. I would say it's the big tasty Justin Pringle. He looks well and truly up for this. Well, yeah, I agree with you, Eugene. I agree with you. Big Tasty does look like he's up for any any competition that uh, he's been put in, you know? Yes, he's yet to get going in this competition. He's got starts. He just cannot get going. He's just the one in the big game. That's flicked down, down the leg side. Quinny Dreyer gets through very quickly, and this is where they complement each other quite well. Quinny Dreyer runs well between the wickets, and that sort of eases the pressure as well on the big tasty as he is now gone to 17 of 10 deliveries. Quinny, he is doing his part. 12 of 7. I must say the wickets here. I tell you what, I want to get my boots on again because the wickets here have been absolutely fantastic. I think they've been really good cricket wickets for both bat and ball. And I think Marnus has done an absolute fantastic job here.
Yeah, I agree with you, Eugene. The wicket's been quite a uh, pleasure to play on, you know. Um, but sometimes it does die out now and then. But they've worked very, very well on the, on the wickets coming in the, the couple of weeks. Yeah, and that's going to conclude the power play. And what a power play it has been for Victoria Creek, sponsored by Creek Adder. And they've amassed 32 runs without losing a wicket. Now then, it's going to be pedal to the medal. Flat on the floor, surely. But as, as we show, and this is the one thing that I have, I want to get your view on this, Jody, while you are here, as you look at that batting card. Overs four and five seem to have been a, a, a make or break for certain of this team. Some teams have done really well, but what we've seen is most teams haven't capitalized on their period after the power play, especially when the field is out. Yeah, that is, I think that's, that's the big um, issue when it comes to over four and five. Because now that the field is spread, everybody tends to think they should go big, but they can't really do it because now there's uh, more men on the boundary. And it's going to be the experience of Marcus Fourier coming in here into the attack. He's yet to light up this T10 for himself with ball in hand. He's a very experienced campaigner. And certainly this is a big moment. And can he, like the big taster here, cash in here on these big moments? That swept, but oh, it's not going to be any. And this is good. I think Belleville have seen Quinny Dreyer the last time, and they're putting that short 45 in on the leg side. Oh, it's excellent work by Andrew. My ears, my ears are, my ears are ringing on the right here. My ears are ringing on the right. Must have clipped the pad. Must have clipped the pad on the way down. This time he goes down. The wick is going to be one bounce to Jared. He does well there. We're going to try and get a look at that previous delivery. Must have clipped the pad. Otherwise, it would have been given wide. As shouted here by the, the team on the right. Just shows what a great competition this has been. The golf ticket. Presents the Cape Town Club Cricket League T10 competition. It's been enthralling. Started out as a hit and miss, but certainly the teams are taking this serious now. And we're in the playoffs here. We're in the eliminator. That's hit down the ground. Oh. Courtney Dreyer was down there. He was down there. And isn't that so important, the running between the wickets? I'm sure you as a bowler wouldn't mind that, just going for ones in this in this format of the game. Yeah, running between the, the wickets is very crucial. Um, I'm sure any batter can take on any fielder out there. But um, going for one in, uh, one in your over, it's pretty good. Glorious shot. Glorious shot there by Quinny, Randy Dreyer. All along the deck there. Why must he run two if he can smash the ball like that? You stay on strike there, Randy. Just a word for Tashwin Lucas. Just bowling that last over. He needed to defend 16 or 15, in fact. As this ball is hit behind square. Sure, Quinny will try and come back for two. He does come back for two. Just the importance of keeping calm and keeping your head in the ladder over and trying to defend that sort of small target. Yeah, Tashwin's uh, quite the experienced campaigner. He knows when to bowl, what to bowl. So um, defending 15 runs or 16 runs in the last over was was quite uh, a hot, uh, a headache. But uh, I, back, I back him to do it. Yeah, no, he's been... A good performer for Dermot Cricket over the years. And you know what you get from him. You just know. In fact, you, we all know what we get from all of you. And that is great to see. And you guys know your skills. And for Ruben Sinekal, your captain, who's a young captain, give us a little bit of a word on him. He's, he's certainly a young guy. And he's certainly I've certainly been impressed with his batting as well. But the most impressive thing that I, I have seen from him is his captaincy. Yeah, Ruben is, is, a, is a, a great bloke. On the field and off the field, um, he's very young. He knows how to assess situations when they need to be assessed. So um, he's quite a, a, a good captain. I could say he could be the future captain of uh, Dovenville Cricket Club coming in the, com in the new season or in the seasons ahead. 
Yeah, he's still got a lot of cricket ahead of him as we see Stefan Lee Lawrence. He comes in. He's only got one wicket to show in this tournament so far. And he's going to be bowling to the big tasty. The big tasty is on 18 off 11. Justin Pringle with him is Quinton Dreyer. He's on 20 of 13 deliveries. He's going to be bowling here from the town end. That's way down the leg side. That's an easy shot. So, Jody, it was great having your little bit of insight. But I think now it's time for us just to depart. But it's great to hear from you. And all the best for that, the final. Thanks a lot, Eugene. Back here to the action here where it's Stephen Lee. Lawrence, he's bowling from the town end. And the big taste is in the mood. The big taste is in the mood. Is that ball going to go? Is it going to go? It's a little bit of a teaser. What do I know? Tease or not, that has gone for four. And back with me is that man, Zahir Adams. Yeah, looks like uh, Mr. Justin Bringle is in the mood today. And when he is in the mood, that's when the ball flies away to the bindy. That's exactly what he's done there. He's really trying to pick up. He's now got to start. Can he cash in? Can he cash in? 45 without loss. Oh, you know he's in the mood. You know he's in the mood when he start hitting shots like that. And Courtney Dreyer, somebody's going to get run out here. Surely somebody's going to get run out. He misses the stumps. It's all happening there. Mate, there was like five, almost five dismissals in one ball there. Dustin Bringer, he had no interest in coming back. Quentin Dreyer, he went. He was like, mate, I'm dragging you through for that second. You coming. That would have been an interesting chat at the golf ticket strategic timeout, which is coming up on four deliveries time. Again, flick down the leg side. It can't get hold of it. Hits the pads. Thought Stephen Lee Lowden's got away with one. That was on the pads. All he needed was a bit of bat than it was. It would have been away for another boundary. Definitely must out the big guy. You just get a tendency. You just have to look at certain players and the way they go about it. And they seem like they're in the mood. The big tasty, he looks like he's in the mood. Hit down the ground. What would you, if you were in the Belleville camp here, what would you be telling them at that strategic timeout? I think it's just to keep your composure. Know that the power play's done. Quentin Dre, he's obviously the big man for them. And then you've got literally the big guy on the other side. So we want you want to get a wicket. Once you get a wicket, you get in a new batter. Then the game changes again. And Quinny has flicked that. He has flicked that to fine leg. And that brings up that brings up the 50 for Victoria Cricket Club. The 50 coming up in the fifth over. Power and then there's Panos from the other end. Panos? Panos? Do you need a dictionary, mate? Where did you where did you plug that one out, mate? Good school, mate. Good school. Oh, here we go. Weinberg boys. Here we go again. Weinberg boys. Oh, a little bit slower. And that ball is gonna conclude. They are actually going to conclude five overs here. And what a five overs it's been for Victoria Cricket Club, sponsored by Crick Hudder, over Belleville Cricket Club, sponsored by Bed Brick 7. And now, as indicated, we are ready for the golf ticket strategic timeout. And we hand over to our man, PM Prasanta. Thank you, Uj. Devi or Sajano, Samay ho chuka hai. Golf ticket strategic timeout ka. और जैसे हम देख सकते हैं कि गल्फ टिकट द्वारा स्पॉन्सर हमारी ड्रिंक्स कार्ट मैदान में पहुंच चुकी है दोनों टीमों के खिलाड़ी यानी कि विक्टोरिया क्रिकेट क्लब और बेलविल क्रिकेट क्लब के खिलाड़ी अपने अपने रिफ्रेशमेंट्स लेते हुए और आगे की रणनीति बनाते हुए मैं आपको बता देना चाहता हूं कि गल्फ टिकट है यू का सबसे ज्यादा भरोसेमंद ऑनलाइन राइफल ड्रॉ यह है फुली रेगुलेटेड रजिस्टर्ड एंड ऑथराइज ऑनलाइन राइफल ड्रॉ फ्रॉम यू आप अभी गल्फ टिकट डॉट कॉम पे रजिस्टर करें लॉग इन करें अपना अकाउंट खोलें और करोड़ों कमाने का मौका पाएं, अपने सपनों को पूरा करिए खेलिए अपनी किस्मत का खेल और अपनी किस्मत को आजमाइए ओनली एंड ओनली विथ गल्फ टिकट क्योंकि गल्फ टिकट ही है 
यू का सबसे ज्यादा भरोसेमंद ऑनलाइन राफल ड्रॉ दर्शकों को बता देना चाहता हूं कि गल्फ टिकट ना सिर्फ हमारे इस स्ट्रेटेजिक टाइम आउट के पार्टनर्स हैं बट वो टाइटल स्पॉन्सर्स भी हैं हमारे इस बेहतरीन से लीग के जिसका नाम है गल्फ टिकट प्रेजेंट्स केप टाउन क्लब क्रिकेट लीग टी क्रिकेट का असली एनिमल और मैं फिर से अपने दर्शकों को याद दिला देना चाहता हूं कि हम एलिमिनेटर गेम देख रहे हैं बिटवीन बेलविल एंड विक्टोरिया क्रिकेट क्लब और इसमें से जो भी टीम जीतेगी वो कल क्वालिफायर टू खेलेगी अगेंस्ट टर्बनविल क्रिकेट क्लब तो ये एक बहुत ही बेहतरीन गेम हम देख सकते हैं और आखिरी के दस सेकंड बचे हुए हैं जहां पे हम देख रहे हैं कि गल्फ टिकट द्वारा हमारी स्पॉन्सर्ड ड्रिंक्स कार्ड अब मैदान से बाहर आते हुए और मैं वापस से माइक देना चाहता हूं हमारे इंग्लिश कॉमेंटेटर यूज को Ah, thank you, Prasanta, for getting us through that. And just before I'm gonna get these two things I want to talk about. Let's just talk about this: the Cape Town Club Cricket League, sponsored there by Golf Ticket Presents. And as they're gonna be the top four, that's gonna battle it out for the Champions League again, and that's still to come. But just two things I want to touch on. First, the pronunciation, the pronunciation or pronunciation, pronunciation of. Panos. Pronunciation. Oh well, whatever. <laughs> Panos, mate. Weinberg boys, but College of Knowledge. College of Knowledge. But the second thing I'm going to talk about: there are two Victoria cricket batters out there. Two. There were nine people out there. Nine people during the strategic timeout. I bet you only one person spoke. Sharing of knowledge, mate. The sharing of knowledge. Getting as many thoughts out there. Why don't you get everybody out there then, mate? To be fair, though, I think the way Quentin Dreyer and Justin Pringle have gone, they don't need much information. They just got to keep going. That'll be the message. It's straight and simple. Do what you've been doing because you've been doing very well. And now they're all sitting quietly. Now to my right here, they all were dashing, getting towels, water, helmets, gloves, all sorts. You mate. name it. You name it. Justin Pringle, he's given the helmet. He's a go. And it's not just. Uh, Old school, blue cap has come out. Oh, it's going to be Jarek McCulloch. He's had a good tournament with ball in hand. One of the men that Balva Cricket Club can really look look at as having a good tournament. Just got to try and move something. I'm not sure what he's going to try and move. Oh, he, he's dropped the, he's put the banner down and Warren, our main man here, he's not happy. He's shouting there. I'm not sure if it was English or Afrikaans. Let's go over to Warren. Or oh, not Warren, let's go over to Zahir, our annunciation guy. Could you make out what he said there? Not a chance, yeah, mate. Not a chance. <laughs> Once again, just the glare of the advertising board just in the batsman's eye. Bowler, he'll have no problem. He's guy. He's bowling with shade, so he doesn't have a problem. Well, he's bowling with his back towards where the glare's coming from. <laughs> that helps too. <laughs> oh, we're back up and running. Full toss, full toss. Starts with a full toss. Commentate the skirts. I do apologize, Jared. I gave you the praise, but he bowled a full toss and Mate, four. That's a buffet ball, and we know how much. Justin Pringle likes a buffet. It's on the, it's on the table, and he's put it away. He's put it away. I want nothing to do with my co-commentator. I'm standing far away from him at the minute as Jared runs in again. Advances yes. down the wicket. That has gone, and he's hit yes. that straight, straight to long on. And Cody Nivot, he doesn't drop those. He doesn't drop those, but it has been a really good knock. This time again, getting a start. Couldn't go on for his team. Ends up getting 29 of 16 deliveries. Peace is ended for Jack. Justin Bringle. He's gone down the wicket. Forge is just not able to get the elevation. And it's Victoria Creek Club who lose their first wicket. But Justin Bringle, he's done a magnificent job here for his side. Provided the impetus here in qualifier two. And it's now it's the skipper, the main man, Marco Wangard, who walks to the crease. It is the main man. I'm just going to 
Just going to say that this one is the eliminator qualified twos tomorrow, sir. But we all look forward to this one. The team that loses here, they, their season is done and dusted. Knockout cricket, knockout. That's what it's all about here. Yeah. Zahir, I said it before, and I'm going to say it again. I'm going to ask you again. The start of this tournament, we came here and teams weren't sure, and it was just a little bit of a mess around. I wouldn't say a mess around in a negative way. A mess around just as having a bash, hit the ball to all parts. But there certainly has been a lot of thinking. There's certainly been a lot of planning going into it now. Absolutely. It's similar to the way T20 cricket also started out. It was a bit of a hit and giggle. Oaks were saying it's not real cricket, but once uh, they get into it and you start working out the, there's actually a plan and strategies going into place. That's hit down the ground by Marco. You might see a little bit better running here now between these two. And Jared, he's again, he's again got a wicket here for them. There's Marco Weingart's figures there. 75 runs, he's a mass. He needs to get a little bit more. He would like to see his team go to that qualifier two tomorrow. That's up in the air. Surely someone's got to take it. It's straight to the man. And that's two wickets in one over. And just like that, this game has turned on his head. Eugene, we spoke about it before the strategic timer. We said it. What are we, what are they speaking about what are Balbo speaking about? They get the spinners in, they take the pace of the ball, and they get the wickets off, the two openers. This game has changed, has turned on its head. You're allowed to knock the ball around. You get ones or twos, whatever. You just can't keep going. Now two of the men that were really in, they gone. So two men to still find their feet or now at the crease. As Warwick Roder, he comes to the crease now. Just, uh, is there time for rebuilding in T10 cricket? I think there is. Hit the ball down the ground for one man. Especially when you lost the wicket. Now you go bang, bang. Mate, you old school, mate. It's all about pedal to the metal here. I uh, fully agree with where you're going. I just think you still time to hit the ball down the ground for one. So if that was one, is a one better than a wicket? That's a question I always ask you. Now, when he came to bat the other day... Risk and reward, sir. Risk and reward. When he came to bat the other day, he left. He shouldered arms to a ball. I would retire him immediately. Immediately. Get off there, young man. It was a good shoulder arms as well. It was well played. <laughs> All playing for the cameras, mate. No time for that. Get in, get stuck in. It's a good over here by Jared. He's turned the game towards Balville, yeah. You just want to see fours and sixes. That's all you want to see. You're a batsman at heart, aren't you? Absolutely. It's all about the ball going over the ropes. Well, it's going to come straight to us. This is the type of cricket you want to see. This is the type of cricket you want to see. Three wickets in and over. This game has turned on his head. It is Jared. The spin, spin has played a crucial, been a crucial factor here. He's come in and he's delivered three killer blows for Balvo. The game before the strategic timeout. And he's popped it up and one and one, at least Marco Weingart. He went downtown, but he didn't have the Voyager miles to go all the way. This is the type of cricket you said. They must just go. I don't agree. Hit the ball down the ground. This time in Quinton Dreyer and T Big Tasty have given you the platform to do that. They've allowed you to do that. Just hit the ball down the ground for one. Don't go chasing it. Now then, three wickets in and over. Now you find yourself on the back foot a little. Mate, you ain't getting bowled out in a T10 game. You're not getting bowled out. Keep going. Keep going. 
You can only go if you've got 11 batters like the Big Tasty and Quinton Dreyer or Marco Weingart. Then I'll agree with you. Plenty of depth in this batting lineup. Plenty of depth. I've got faith in the men sitting on the right hand side of me. They still plenty in that tank to come. Dayan Stover's a new man after all of that. That Zahir was trying to explain to me. We definitely agreeing to disagree on that one. But that's the joy. That's the beauty of the game, isn't it? If we had one way of playing cricket, it would be a very, very boring game. The captain himself coming into the attack, Cody Nivo. And still smashing it. They're still trying to smash it. That is one bounce down there to long on. What we saw from Stober, he can play a few lusty blows. But he's also, he also got a lot of dot balls in that innings. He missed a few there, he's Cody Nivo. He hasn't, he hasn't taken... A lot of wickets. In fact, just the one. There's a big shot, and that's going to go to the mid-wicket boundary, is it? No. A lot of real estate out there. So it's going to go just for the double. Two runs. Are we in for a cracker here as well? There's been good cricket here today. Good scoring. Stobus. Oh, what an excellent hand there. What an excellent hand by the fielder. They come back for two, but Stobus starting to swing himself off his feet. Zahir must be smiling from ear to ear because every, because every time he's facing up here, Stobus trying to hit the ball into the town center. He's got the memo. He knows this is the way to go. You want to play in that qualifier too tomorrow? Keep going. He wants to hit the ball into the town center. I think I don't mind him going. Why don't you go a little bit straight, Amon? I think his natural inclination is to go across the line. He's a big lad. He wants to get those levers going. That's hit through the offside. Oh, it's a misfield. It's a misfield. They're going to come back for two and maybe even three. It's just going to be the two. So that concludes the seventh over where Victoria Creek Club, sponsored by Creek Ada, have moved to 64. And there's one short, in fact, there's one short run. So the score is going to be 65 now for three. You look at that scorecard and you see at the top of the order, it's Justin Pringle and Quinton Dreyer. They got them off to a flyer. But then the spin of Jared E brought Bowell straight back into the game. And this is a crucial aspect here for Victoria Cricket Club. 18 balls remaining. They're wanting to get up to 100. They know that's the magic total. Are they going to get close there? I think Victoria have got to play their hand in their own little downfall here, losing those wickets. But Jared... He's going to bowl. He's second over. That ball has hit out. It's just going to be one. It's just going to be one. That's big. That's huge. That should be a 12. That's down towards the B field. It was short and he saw it and he swung with all his might. That certainly was a big, big hit. That was a massive hit. I did say he shouldered arms a ball 
in the previous match. He played his shoulder arms. He got a lot of stick for it. He got a lot of praise for that shot now. It's only about swinging arms right now, mate. There's no shouldering arms. It's all about swinging arms. Like I said, the amount of stick Warwick got for shouldering arm or ball in the previous game. I, I mean, really, now he had to come out and start swinging. Mate, that's a fine. I'd like to be in that fight meeting after the game if you're shouldering arms. Oh, that's going to bring Stover. You know what type of shot he's going to play. We all know. We all know. It's coming our way, mate. It's coming our, our way. way. There, over there, mate. Towards the scoreboard. Towards the scoreboard. He just hits that way. You can bring the sweeper up. Moving the field, springing. Team Square out. There it is. There it is. Keeper. Cameron with the field. They're going to come back for two. They're going to come back for two, and he's going to keep the strike. Wanted a better throw there from the field of Stobo. He was, he was struggling for that second. He's another one that had the celebrations yesterday, running off. Whatever was was laid on the table last yesterday. Smash along the ground. Oh, this is surely going to be a run out. Oh, they missed. He's missed the ball. The throw wasn't that great. I didn't get a good bounce off the off the cricketing surface, and Andrew unfortunately couldn't collect that. Stovers, he is. Very happy that he isn't fasting anymore because he's being all through for the second year he's being. And if all money was on his way, but the keeper wasn't able to pick it up cleanly. And again, it's a swing. He's getting an inside edge. And then it goes for four. It's gone for four. And in fact, he didn't get an inside edge. It's gone for four buys. Jared, he is, after that excellent first over, he struggled because between Warwick and Dayan, they've gone plenty of this, of this over. How would you describe Dayan's batting here? There's a term in Afrikaans, it's called the long leopard, and that's what he walks in with. The long spoon? <laughs> Absolutely, he's got and it, and he utilizes it to good effect. He's got a long spoon. That's an absolute cracker from Zaire. Beautiful. The long spoon. Beautiful. Here we go. Two overs remaining. But then these two, Warren Extra and Warwick as well, they have decided they're going to take the attack to the Balfour Cricket Club, sponsored by Bet Brick 7. That's a that's you! What a shot that is! That is a magnificent stroke. There was no pace on the ball. He needed to create the impetus himself, and he threw his hands in it. And went over, way over deep exit cover. That shot brings up the 100 for Victoria Cricket Club. <laughs> Powerfully hit down the ground. What an extra. He was down, he was out. Like Carl Lewis back in the day when the gun goes off. He ran like a gazelle and turned quite smartly. Two more runs. go again throw comes into the keepers in this is excellent running Warren Extra might not be facing but he is doing the hard yards he's pulling Warwick through for two couples here three balls to go three balls to go here from Marcus Fourie. He 
spit that hard again down to long off. Down to long off. Oh, it's unbelievable stuff. Unbelievable fielding by the captain, Cody Nevo. It was excellent cricket from all parties involved. It was a lovely stroke. And then we saw some desperate fielding here in the deep. Looked for all money like it was going for the boundary. But then the outstretched hand, and that is excellently done. Super stop. Absolute magnificent stop by Cody Nevo. In a game such as this, we saw the last one going down. The qualifier one going down to the final delivery. This could possibly be the difference come the end of the game. That is a magnificent bit of fielding. He really threw himself at that ball. Just shows the importance. Just shows where is that. Marcus Faree, two balls to go. He charges, he's hit that. That's going to come down to Cody Nivot, the man that made that crucial, that crucial stop. And the very next ball, they get the wicket, they get the wicket. That just shows the, the impact of, that, that, of, the, of the fielding. It could have hated the charge because it was the other batter that faced was Warren, Warren Extra. And he unfortunately holds up, but he's played a little, a little bit of a gem as Warren Extra. Yeah, all systems go here. They had to go get the bottom of the bat. And as that man never defines himself always in the most important positions. He has a hit. It comes back to that ball before. It was an unbelievable stop. He really flung himself. Who says this, this game doesn't matter? That just shows the importance. But what a little gem of an innings there by Warren Extra for Victoria Cricket Club. You bet as Reese Thompson. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are in for a barnstorming eliminator here between these two teams. 107 now for five with one ball to come. Let's not forget, Belleville in the last outing amassed 126. All thanks to Andrew. There he goes, through extra again, and again, Cody Nivot is in. In the action, and that's going to be two runs. And I feel that's going to be very easy for us. Because the target's going to be 110 in the lot of 10 overs for a place in qualifier two. That's all to do here in this match between these two teams. Victoria Creek Club, sponsored by Creek Adder, and Belleville Creek Club, sponsored by Bet Creek 7. It's certainly been a really entertaining first half of this eliminator. As we look, go through that scorecard, Quinton Dreyer, 24 of 16 deliveries. Justin Pringle, 29 of 17. They set the platform there. And then, as I said, it was a little bit of a rabbit in headlights. Marco, he went for one. Jared, he came into the attack, got three wickets in one over. And saw the end of the top three there. It's really been a good target. And now we're going to show you some highlights from that first innings. And then we're going to listen to some key men and hear what they have to say. Join us again.
we're going to have a couple of chats here with two of the probably the most important men in this fixture for this eliminator between Victoria Cricket Club and Balva Cricket Club. And first, we've got Justin Pringle, the big tasty. So, Justin, you open the, bow, the, the batting for Victoria. Just give us a little bit of insight what goes through your head, especially in a T10 competition. Yeah, um, look, for especially for the power play, um, looking to take the fielders on. Um, obviously, trying to maximise as much as possible how many runs we can get in that first three overs. Um, yeah, and for me, it's just looking to put the bowlers under pressure from ball one. We, we yet to see you going in this tournament, and the reason why I'm saying I've seen a lot of you, and I think you probably yourself would, would, would say that and will agree with me that you haven't really got yourself going in this competition with a bat in hand. Yeah, definitely. I've gotten a few uh, nice starts mm. and just haven't capitalised on it, um, which is disappointing for me because I know what I'm capable of, and uh, I know if once I get going, it's difficult to stop me. So, yeah. How important is it that if you in and when you get in and you get a start to really capitalise on that, the importance of a batter really, once he gets there, to really kick on? Yeah, it's, I think for me, especially in, in, in our team dynamic, once I get going, sets the whole team up for a nice big total, uh, especially in these 10 overs. So for me, it's just trying to put that bowler under pressure all the time. What's your thoughts on this now, the eliminator? Something that we're not accustomed to in, in the type of cricket that we play, especially at club level. It really brings a, another bowl of excitement to you. Um, yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a good way, um, especially for the, the, this format of the eliminators, um, because you don't just have one chance. Um, you get more than one chance to get back into that final spot. So, yeah, it's good. Listen, go well today. Thanks. That was the thoughts of Justin Pringle. So now we're going to get the other stalwart for Balville Cricket Club. has been around for a while. Marcus Fourier, you come and join me. Marcus, you as well at the top of the order with both bat and ball. Just from a batter's perspective, we heard from Pringle. What, what are the type of things that you think about with a bat? Um, thanks, Eugene. Um, I think it's important to, to capitalise in the, the first three overs um, because there's only two out. Yeah. The ball's hard. The ball's always hard, but... Um, I think the first three overs is very important. You can't have dot balls and you have to, unfortunately, go hard up front from ball one. So for me, yeah, first three overs, most important of the, the whole game. And certainly with the ball, these batters are just going at you, don't they? <laughs> yeah, the, I, I haven't had a, a great tournament so far. The batsman just demolishes me. <laughs> but that's, that's, that's cricket um, and that's what I love about the game. It keeps you on your toes the whole time and... Um, you just have to think the whole time and try to figure out as quick as possible what the batsman is going to do and hope they don't hit it. Yeah, you have been a sort of st old statement there, stayed or stalwart, I should say, there for Balva Cricket Club. What does, it what does it mean for you as well as the club coming through like you guys did into this eliminator? Look, we, we're quite a young side. So we have two or three first-team players, then second-team, third-team, fourth-team players that plays in this league now. And that's, that's very promising for the club to see. People's growth, uh, youngsters coming through the, the ranks and showing their, their skills, what they can do at the end of the day. Yeah, and that's really good. And I think for me, for just looking out, it's really been a team effort. Yeah, definitely. Um, the way um, our captain, Cody Nivo, uh, took over from me did, and brought everybody together is just fantastic. And our coach, Mark, just been phenomenal in uh, getting the guys' mindsets right and say, hey, I can do it. I'm not a fourth team player anymore. I can be on top of my game and on top of, of the other, other players. I think we should get you guys to play every day because whenever you guys play, it's blue skies and the weather's hot. Yes, luckily uh, the weather has been kind to us. Uh, we had one game where it was a bit of a, a rainy start, but yeah, the weather has been very nice to us. Listen, go well today. Thank you very much, Eugene. Have a nice one. That's a couple of thoughts of some of the key men I feel that's going to take place here in this eliminator between Victoria and Balville Cricket Club.
And welcome back here to the Gulf Ticket presents the Cape Town Club Cricket League T10 match. And it's match number 30, the Eliminator. One of these two teams, Belleville Cricket Club, sponsored by Betbrick 7 and Victoria Cricket Club, sponsored by Cricket Outer. They are not going to go through to that qualifier. It's a team of Victoria. They hold the advantage a little bit. I would say a little bit because they amassed 109 in their 10 overs. So it looks like the 109, 110, that seemed to be par because Durbanville Cricket Club earlier defended 105 runs earlier on. So for Belleville Cricket Club, they have got to get 110. As you see, the umpire is sponsored by ID247. They're making their way out there and it's going to be the two men from Belleville Cricket Club. Andrew and Marcus Fouri. It's a dangerous Andrew. And he's going to open the attack again. So what can they do in chasing that? A place in Qualifier 2 awaits them tomorrow where they will take on Ronda Bosch Cricket Club. And with me, as always today, good to have him here. Good to have an insight because he's certainly seen a lot of the T10 competitions around. Good to have you, Zaire Adams. Cricket calendar, club cricket calendar. It's been, it's given these young men an opportunity to shine. It's given them a chance to play on a platform they wouldn't have been exposed to before. And they've really, really should. We saw a fantastic qualifier one with Turbanville edging out fellow title contenders, Ronda Bosch, by just a few runs. And now Victoria have posted an even bigger total. So we can only expect another fabulous chase. I wouldn't go that far. It's only five runs more, but yeah, I hear what you say. <laughs> I'm just here to disagree with you today because I haven't seen you here. Yeah, it's been a month of fasting and self-reflection, you know, so you've come out here and you feel a little bit lighter and you're wanting to expose your, share your thoughts in the world with, with everyone. <laughs> That's the inside of Zaire Adams there. Emotionally lighter. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's your word again? I'm, not, I'm never going to forget that word. What was that? Panache. Panache. Oh, that's the word for me. Well, we're getting ready here for the second innings. Belleville Cricket Club. Victoria Cricket Club. A place in qualifier two awaits the winner of this. And it's going to be Quinny Dreyer. He opens the batting and he also opens the bowling here. He's going to open the bowling from the town end. There's his stats there. He's only picked up three wickets. But he's a key member of this bowling attack for Victoria Cricket Club. He's going to be bowling to Andrew, who finds himself in that fourth position. Of the amount, most runs scored in this tournament. It's not the most runs that we potentially looking at. It's how quickly they've come. A strike rate averaging 211. Wide outside off stump. And now Quinny Dreyer, he starts with a wide. He sort of looks back there at the umpire very, very quickly. Unfortunately, the umpire indicates... No, you've got to re -bowl that one. So, Belleville Creek Club, they're on their way. It's not the start you want when you're trying to get to a playoff game. That's going to be hit away. Pass, mud off. The fielder's chasing it. Ends up stopping that as well. So, that's extra. They come back for two. I just heard in passing there when the two teams were in the dressing room, one of the key points or the key KPIs that Sadiq has for Victoria Cricket Club, as we see this ball, facing him outside of the is that he doesn't want any extra deliveries. It's not only the fact that one run that, that you give away, it's the extra ball at the end of the over, and we've seen that go for a boundary on so many occasions. And that's what he's targeted. Keep your disciplines. If we do the basics right, we'll get over the line. Oh, 
he's sort of swinging at that one and that's the way that's the way he's been playing and people are shouting throw 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 the ball but Warwick he decided nah I'll just hold on to this one you get fined for not throwing the ball now tough scenes here very tough scenes golf cricket Cape Town club T10 unreal scenes I wonder what I wonder what you get if you throw the ball hit the stumps of batters in and it goes for four is that a fine as well? You get a bonus. Oh. <laughs> From the opposition. Marcus for a yarn strike. That's edge. And it's gone for four. It's gone for four. I, I, just once. Can somebody just go out there? Just put in a slip. Early on. It doesn't have to be all the... It doesn't have to be for the whole duration of the power play. Mate. The moment the ball is, I knew you were going to go on that. That's gone to gully. That's gone to gully. Well, just do something. Just get a man next to the keeper. Yeah, just, just get a man next to the keeper. You're going to run, scamper through for one. I mean, you can move the slip a little bit wider, whatever the case may be. Just do something outside the norm. Who would you take out, Kijini? Who would you take out to put in the slip? If you look at the field, who would you get out? But we could, because... They've got a guy on a deep square boundary, so he can go in and catch there if he wants, especially from the left-hander there, because it seems like it's going to go across the left-hander. Good start here by Balvo. They've already got nine off that first, oh, first five deliveries. Smash through in the offside again, holding on to the ball. That was the big tasty doing the fielding that time, and that concludes over number one. Ten coming off it. Why am I being a little bit too optimistic? Maybe. I think. I think maybe the way the same way that I go on about batters and having to keep going and looking for playing with positive intent. I think you as a bowler, you've got a similar mindset. You're wanting to take wickets because that's the the best way to keep the run rate down because. It, if you don't take wickets, particularly in that power play, batters get momentum and they just really start, they get away from you. So if there's an opportunity to take wickets, get the slip in there. So I, I do I certainly understand the rationale behind it. I just look at IPL cricket here and that's what you're trying to base yourself. And they are very attacking. They sometimes definitely go with the slip, especially with that new ball. Like I said, just something out of the norm. and Give yourself a chance. Just give yourself a chance, I feel. Anyway, it's going to be the other Pringle, Sergio Pringle. He's going to be bowling here from the golf course end. And I must say, the temperatures has heated up here tremendously here in Cape Town now. And that's gone. And it's gone all the way. As my colleague would say, it's going huge. Balvo Creek Club, they on the charge here. Slots it into the pad. Sends it all the way over the boundary. This man is dangerous. He is a dangerous man. Andrew, what's the response? Gone again. He's gone again. It's gonna be four. It's gonna be four. So Sergio Pringle struggle in the previous game, just in terms of his areas and literally but bowling three hits at the moment because there's nobody on the leg side and it's just slotting to the pads and all Andrew needs to do is get a bit of willow on it. Well, he's made a change now. He's brought a man. He's brought the sweeper up. He's brought the sweeper up off the offside, so we've got a long on in place, and we've got a deep square in place now. So he's got to keep going straight. He can't give too much width now. He can't give too much width, and then he bowls the ball wide out of off stump. Shall we just say execution, not there? I think the planning is more like it's not just the execution. It's 
before we get to the execution, what is he actually trying to do? He's put two men on the leg side, but he's still going outside the off stump. Taking the face off that time. Still, I'm still very wary of that. Freeing the arms off on the offside. He's just got to watch that. That's going to be Marcus Fourier. What is the field going to be for the left-hander now? Gene, it's interesting. You've, you've, when the field's been up on the left side, he's gone into the pads, brought the men up on the offside, and he's gone outside of stump. Nothing interesting about that, mate. It just doesn't make sense. A few other words I could have used. Well, he's going to stay over the wicket. So the two men out are long on and deep square again for the left-hander. There's a ring on the offside. Marcus Free likes to free his arms out outside that off stump. He's gone over the top, over the top, off covers. The ball is trying to get to the boundary. Oh, it's gone. One feel that that has gone for four. We're going to have to have another look at that. That wasn't the best of fielding. Yeah, and you just see him go there. He thought he left the dive a little bit too late. Should have gone earlier. And not quite getting his hands onto it and running away. But Sergio Pringle, he's under pressure here. He's freed his arms up outside the off stump. I said it before. I said it when I saw this field. I said he cannot allow... Marcus Fourier, who loves to free his arms up outside the rock stump, any work, and just a smidgen of width outside the off stump, and he just throws the bat at him. One, two, three, out the over. What is the plan? The, everybody on the leg side takes, puts them out, bowls on the off side, brings them up on the off side, goes onto the pad. I'm not understanding what the plan is here. It, sounds, it seems like you're more upset. It seems like the roles have been reversed from the first innings between us here, mate. That's much better. He ends the over by Sergio Pringle. He's conceded. 20 off the over. Ro at least Bubble Creek Club. They are 30 after two. So they got the perfect start in this quality. In this quality. Eliminator. <laughs> they have the perfect start. Andrews, 15 of seven. Marcus Furi. I mean, if you look at that there, I mean, they've got it all to do. Coach Sadik is just sipping long and hard on that orange juice. The, the cup is not big enough. He needs a bigger cup because his throat is getting certainly dry watching what we are watching out there. What an extra. Quick leg spin. Quick leg spin in the power play. This could be the, the change that Victoria needed. We see Warwick. So it's not a traditional leg spinner. He rushes through his deliveries quite a bit. So five wickets in the tournament already. He's bowled him! He has bowled him! He's got the big fish. He's got Andrew. And that is a massive wicket. First ball up. What an extra. He strikes. How many times have we seen it here at the golf cricket Cape Town Club T10 League? Whenever the spinner comes on, he just creates a little bit of point of difference, immediately wanting to reverse and goes all around it. And he's castled. And Victoria suddenly from conceding 20 runs to the over, they are now back in the game. Yeah, it wasn't a great option that first time up. I know you're a big fan of getting on with the game, getting on with the game, but I'm sure even you... Zahir would not have liked that Absol option for a shot. Absolutely. Just have a look. Well, you do know that Warring's extra is a little bit quicker than the other the other spinners. So you're wanting to just change the field immediately. But you perished in the attempt. Yeah, the all-rounder Blake, he's in now. He's got mass 40 runs in two innings that he's been out there in the middle. He's going to be there with Marcus Fourie. And we said it, and we even you said it, it's time for the big men to step up. And he's this Marcus Fourier. He's stepping up to the plate with bat in hand here for Balvo Cricket Club, sponsored by Bet Brick 7. Some of the crowd just enjoying the cricket there. They're finding some shade because it is a tad bit hot today. 
to come. Oh, bold boy, bold boy. Come out in mid-April and get weather like this down in Cape Town. Magnificent. Absolutely magnificent. Some guys still have to play rugby in this weather. That sort of worked away. It's quick. It's through for one. But this has been a very, very good over here by Warren Extra. Just feel the amount of experience and cricket intelligence on the park that Victoria also well coached by Sadiq Davids that they, their plans would be a lot better in this power play. I'm not think. I must think I don't think the plans have been the issue. It's been the execution. They haven't really bowled to their field. That's a short ball. That is going to work away. Pass a diving. Big tasty. And it's gone for four. And that just relieves some of the pressure of this over. Might have looked at his field, but the delivery in the was, didn't quite come out of the hand like he would have wanted. It was an easy tuck away. Nicely played off his hip, so to speak. And he timed the pants of that. Down the leg side wide. And that is just the pressure that you get. The minute you concede a boundary in your over, you all of a sudden the one that's under pressure. I'm sure the coach, Sadi Davids, this is not what he had in plan. This is not what he had in store for them. Clipped away again. That ball is going to deep mid wicket. Excellent sliding stop as well, but it's going to come back for two. Oh no, they're going to come back for three. This is very, very untidy. The basics of the game, the basics of the game, they're not doing well with that at the minute. That's what, that was the message at the beginning. Do the basics while you get over the line. Keep the extras to the minimum. Take your catches to clean fielding. The pressure of an eliminator does some funny tricks on players. Oh, it's a dot ball to finish, and that's going to conclude the power play period. Yeah, three overs gone. They've got the run rate from 11 to just hovering slightly, slightly above 10. So the first job is done during that first power play for, bed, for the Bed Bricks Balville Cricket Club team. Looks like the captain himself, he's going to hand over the ball here. Bowler, Aiden Darman, another youngster that they've entrusted with the ball. Yeah, who would want to be a coach in T10 cricket? He turned greyer by, the, by every ball, but it seems like. Definitely does seem so. You can see that one over. That's just being the difference at the moment. Sergio Pringle hosting his lines and his length. Well, we see him again. <laughs> that is the big question. That is the big question. Power play is up, so you can get men out on the boundary. You've got a deep extra cover. Third man, long on, long off, mid wicket. Wide outside off some. And that is going to go for four as well. And I'm going to go back to what I said. I don't think it's a planning. I think it's the execution here of these bowlers by Victoria Cricket Club. Marco Eingard could have thought of uh, his worst nightmare coming true. It's exactly what transpired there. It wasn't just an exit delivery. But it also... Went away for four extra runs. So he hasn't bowled a ball yet, and he's already conceded five. That was nearly a no ball, as was that wide. Nearly missed a cut strip. It's gone down the leg side again. It's gone down the leg side. So without a ball being bowled, 
This over is costing six runs already. Pressure off the batter. What an extra. What an extra has done. Really well in the previous over to haul it back. And suddenly now he's gone. Wide down the... On the offside, now he's gone wide down the leg side. The only blessing probably was the keeper getting a glove on it and not running away again. Blessing. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's just got to run in. Be clear in your thought. Run in and hit a mark. You do that day in, day out. Our sound technician, Kayla, she is a valuable supporter. She's even biting her nails in this encounter. It's a no ball. It's a no ball. Oh, it's all happening. We haven't had a legal ball bowled in this over, and it's gone for eight. Well, it's going to be a free hit. Oh, he's lofted that over the keeper. He sort of ramped it over him. And that's going to be four. Now, the job's done in this over. Anything else here as bonus? Or would you say, keep going? Mate, that was beautifully executed. I think the bonus for Victoria, they finally got a legal delivery in the over. They'll take that. So five balls left. I'll tell you what, Sadi can't wait to get to that golf ticket strategic timer to get some word to his troops because this has not been good. The first three and one over, three overs, one ball. That hasn't been good from Victoria Cricket Club. They have to try and turn this around. This looks like a walk in the park at the minute. In a short and wide one. This stage, Balville are going to win it in the power play. The key year, though, here for Aiden Diamonds, we I think that the, he's got. He's a young man, and he's got to. He's just got to reassess, and he's got to. Eugene, we've all been there. This is where things go wrong, and the nerves start picking up, and the, he's worrying about the next delivery. He's got to. Focus purely on what's to come. There's no point in worrying about what's gone. The, those first three deliveries are gone. That's the thing of the past. How does he finish this over? He saw Sergio Pringle go for 20. He's, he's on 13. He's got to try and limit the next three balls. That's the, that's the crucial aspect. hit that back of a leg. Now, for me, I would go for those two balls that we've seen. They went full and straight at Marcus Ferri. Ended up getting a dot and then bowled one back of a leg. He's just got to try and get... Don't give any width here and just try and go full, as full as you can and try and get the batter to hit it to your sweeper, your sweeper man, whether it's straight or on the sweeper bunch through on the awful leg side. He hasn't done that. So 14 already with two balls to go in this over. Outside the off stump, here's a dot. Can he get a little bit of confidence with that? Now then, the other thing to think about Zahir is, he's gone for 14. Sergio Pringle's gone for 20. Now, if any one of them don't bowl their second over, who's going to come in and bowl? Kipper's going to have to turn his arm over here, mate. Beautifully played here, down to long on. Oh, they're coming back for two. They're throwing the ball to the keepers in. And that's excellent running. Excellent running there by Blake. Getting himself home. And that's another two runs. So this over has gone for 16 runs. Makes the equation. 55 runs needed of 36 balls. What do you think, Aiden Diamonds? He actually got out to that over very well. It was a horror start. A nightmare start. But the way he managed to come back, he actually held his nerve very well. So... 
plenty of thinking to do here for Victoria Click Club. Well, it's struggling to get a message on here as it's going to be Reese Thompson to come into the attack. I'm not sure if they want that option from the sideline. But looks like the captain has entrusted Reese Thompson here to come into the attack. The man with the Will Smith hairstyle. He's coming in here. Fresh Prince, easy. As you can see, mate, look at it. Where's Jazzy Jeff? Sitting in the huts, mate. Another sip. Another sip of that orange juice there by Sadiq Davis. He's a man that plans meticulously about things. And surely this is not what he envisaged his team going out there. And this is going to be the over that take us to that all-important strategic timeout for both these teams in this eliminator. That's hit away. It's going to go in the air. Oh, he's missed it. He has missed it. And it's gone for four. It's gone for four. They just come off and over. And they had an opportunity. Would have, could have just lifted the spurs. Got everybody back in a huddle. Snow, but falling short there. And that's flicked off the hip. Again, they could come back for two years, but as Warwick, he does well to keep it down to just one. An excellent throw. The ball before, so I'm not sure why Stober dived there. The ball was coming at him, and his leg sort of flicked out. I think he was going for the old 10 on the old point system to try and kick that catch. I think, Eugene, when in situations like this, you, you get fielders who want the ball, and you get fielders who don't. And it just didn't look like Stober wanted that. He did so the other day as well. He did so the other day as well with that. Victoria Cricket Club, they've got it all to do here. 50 runs needed off 34 balls. Can you believe it? And I think we can agree. Victoria have gifted them this position they currently find themselves in here. It's again a wide delivery. You just feel that after this over, there's got to be a I think Victoria, they've got to show their hand here. I think the players don't want that strategic timeout because they're going to have to listen to their coach, Sadiq David. I reckon it's a bit of head drive, Tietman. Come out, charge. That, that head drive has been charged all. Five overs already. Beautiful shot through the offside. It's just going to be one. Takes it now to under 50. Takes it to 49 runs. Now neither of 32 deliveries. I think this is where Bowel Creek Club also have to realize they've got their foot on the throat here of Victoria. Club, of Victoria. It's time to really push it down now. You cannot look and think, we'll 50 or 32, we've brought it in to a, a manageable situation and we play some normal cricket. Keep on going. Keep on going. <laughs> Big hit. You. Hit. Marcus Ferry, he's got the memo. He's not going to stop. That's, he's got his foot straight on the gas there. He's a dangerous, dangerous player. Yet to set this tournament to light. You said it at the start. It's time for big players to step up. He's certainly that big player for Balbo Cricket Club. He hasn't had the, the run of the green here in this game, in this tournament. But he's certainly standing up here to be counted. Hitting that a long, long way. Feel that after this over, Victoria, they've got to gamble, but they've got to get the best bowlers on here and not wait for the death. He's gone again. He's gone again. Stober trying to get there. This time he does well. They're going to come back for two because you know why? It's a big, big boundary out there. And that is going to conclude five overs. And what a five overs it's been for Belleville Creek Club, sponsored by Betbrick 7, as now we're going to go into the golf ticket strategic timeout, and it's an all-important timeout for Victoria Creek Club, sponsored by Creek Udder. But now I'm going to hand you over to that man, PM Prasanta, to take us through that strategic timeout. A better party, Kelly. 
विक्टोरिया क्रिकेट क्लब में जिसके जवाब में बेलविल क्रिकेट क्लब बहुत ही धमाकेदार शुरुआत ले चुके हैं समय हो चुका है दर्शकों गल्फ टिकट स्ट्रेटिजिक टाइम आउट का और गल्फ टिकट द्वारा स्पॉन्सर्ड हमारी ड्रिंक्स कार्ट मैदान में पहुंच गई है और खिलाड़ियों को उनके रिफ्रेशमेंट दे रही है दर्शकों को बता देना चाहता हूं हमेशा की तरह कि गल्फ टिकट है यू का सबसे ज्यादा भरोसेमंद ऑनलाइन राफेल ड्रॉ ये है फुली रेगुलेटेड रजिस्टर्ड एंड ऑथराइज राफेल ड्रॉ फ्रॉम यू आप अभी गल्फ टिकट डॉट कॉम पे रजिस्टर करें लॉग इन करें अपना अकाउंट खोलें अपने दोस्तों से लॉग इन करवाइए उनका अकाउंट खुलवाइए और आप पा सकते हैं करोड़ों कमाने का मौका अपने सपनों को पूरा करिए ओनली एंड ओनली विद गल्फ टिकट डॉट कॉम क्योंकि गल्फ टिकट ही है यूई का सबसे ज्यादा भरोसेमंद ऑनलाइन राफेल ड्रॉ खेलिए अपनी किस्मत का खेल आजमाइए अपने लक को और अपना खाता खोलें गल्फ टिकट की वेबसाइट गल्फ टिकट डॉट कॉम पे गल्फ टिकट की टैगलाइन है शेयरिंग मिलियन स्माइल्स और आपके चेहरे पर भी वो एक बड़ी सी मुस्कान लेके आ सकते हैं अगर आप गल्फ टिकट पे अपने लक को आजमाएं और क्या पता उन मिलियन लोगों में से आप भी एक हो जिनसे गल्फ टिकट द्वारा उनको बहुत फायदा मिला हो आखिरी दस सेकेंड बचे हैं गल्फ टिकट स्ट्रेटेजिक टाइम आउट के और गल्फ टिकट द्वारा स्पॉन्सर्ड हमारी ड्रिंक्स कार्ड अब मैदान से बाहर आते हैं Great deal of thanks there to PM Prasanta taking us through that golf ticket strategic timeout, and there it is still to come, ladies and gentlemen. The golf ticket presents the Cape Town Club Cricket League T10 Champions League with the support top teams that made it to the playoff. They will battle it out again in that Champions League in the first edition of this. The golf ticket presents the Cape Town Club Cricket League T10 competition. Now then. Are we going to see something different? Are we going to see a spanner in the works here? Are we going to see maybe a little bit of a twist? I know our sound technician doesn't want to see that twist, but we want to see that twist just to keep us on the edge of our seats because Victoria Cricket Club have it all to do. 41 runs needed by Belleville Cricket Club of 30 balls. What a turnaround! I keep hopping on about it, but it has been a fantastic turnaround by Balvo Cricket Club in this competition. And now then, in route to trying to get to the target of 110, they're 41 runs away from that 30 balls, and they still got nine wickets in hand. Still the captain, still to come. As now they turn to Warwick Rhoda to see if he can try and get a wicket here. Oh, it's not out. Even my, even the scorer and they're sitting next to me, sitting miles away, say that's not out, and his eyes are very, very good. I mean, I'm not sure well why he's appealing. I mean, another set of stumps there probably would have, would have missed that as well. It's going to bring the dangerous markers for each 35 or 14 deliveries. Can he take Balva Creek up through to the end here? Big hit down the ground. That might go. Yeah, good, yeah. good, good, good boy. Oh, an excellent yeah. work there by Warren Extra, well the old well veteran. Well he did the long well yards and put in the dive as well. But that was hit very hard by Marcus Farid down the ground. Just the two runs. Slow ball, ball. That's well bowled. We haven't seen too many of that. I have to say as well, we haven't seen too many changes of pace. It's just been seam of the seam of the seam. Nothing, no pace being taken off by the seamers. No cutters. Go, your man. Let's go, your man. Behind Warwick. This time he's gone, and there is a breakthrough for Victoria Cricket Club. They have managed to get a wicket, and that's the wicket of Blake. That's a second wicket gone with a score on 73. Ball drifting in. Oh, that is hitting straight in front. 
not the difficult decision there for the umpire and he affirms that decision with his finger up in the air and that's the end of Blake and that's the second wicket gone for Belleville Cricket Club and that's going to bring Cody Nivo. he's the man now to the crease and he's going to join Marcus Fouri 94 runs for Cody Nivo. he's played his part he's played a few very very important innings here for Belleville Cricket Club now the two most experienced men there out in the middle Whatever was said at the break must have worked a ton of magic. Good body, good body. Mr. Davids, he wasn't impressed. He definitely wasn't. He's still not impressed. You can hear him speaking away on the right hand side. 37 of 26, surely, Zahir. The batting side must be favourites. Absolutely, in all. Everything points to Barvel joining Rondebosch tomorrow. In that on, qualifier too. But the oldest cliche on, is it's a funny old game. Oh boy, oh Again, boy. just taking the pace off and getting full. Go we on, haven't on, seen on, this again. from any of the front seamers at all. Go and on, Warwick, go he go hasn't go got go a go great go deal of pace, but he's varying whatever go pace go he go has. Go and he's certainly bowling a better line and a better length. That's hit out down to long off. It's just going to be one. Good, They just got to keep their heads here. It's a very good over. Only gone for four and picked up the vital wicket there of Blake as well. That is a fantastic over there for Victoria. That's just the one they wanted after the break. They had the chat. They had the conversation. And suddenly they, they produced an over of just four runs and the big wicket. The key man is going to remain Marcus Fury. But Gene, I do think that there's still a twist in the tail here. I was just about to say, the closer they get to that target, the more nerves they might be within that Balva ranks. They might grip the bat a little bit harder. Who knows? They might not take on the singles. They might just keep looking for the big shots. It's what an extra. He's going to bowl his quick leggies again. I think this is a great call here by the captain. This is a great call. What a format this has been. T10 cricket ebbing and flowing one way to the other. Oh, it's a quick run and they keep the scoreboard, the scoreboard ticking in the positives. That's what they have to do. They have to just try and avoid the dot ball. Crucial animosis with the... Right, left hand combination. You're now having to change the field again. Men are going to have to go out on the leg side. It just causes a little bit of confusion. That is what the, the value of Marcus for out there. Dot ball. Dot ball. Every dot being applauded. Every single going to be applauded. This is going to go down to the wire. 35 or 22. We've had two tremendous games here today here in this D10 competition. Again a dot. No, they're going to come back for a bye. But that's still good. That's still good. That's fine. That's fine. You, got, you get the danger, man. Marcus Furio of strike as well. That's the new batter. He's at the crease. Come on, boys. Come on, come on. That's going to be hit over, sort of bounced into the wicket, into the pitch. Bounced over the bowler's head. Oh, they just got to keep the basics well here. Victoria Cricket Club, hold your heads, man. Thirty-three runs needed. Twenty balls still remaining. Shall we say it? Super over. Firmly hit down the ground. What an extra. Done well. And we've reached that ball. We've reached the Z ball. We have reached the Z ball. That all important Z ball. Come, lads. Come, lads. Come, lads. Ah, he's what an extra. How's he going to get out of this over? It's been an excellent one thus far. And 
he gets out of there beautifully. It's just one run of the over. What an exile. Take a bow. You've got your team back in this game. He certainly has. Now then, over to the remaining bowlers to be bowled by the remaining bowlers here. And who are they going to be? That is the real crucial question. Surely Warwick Rhoda should bowl his second over. Just give it to him. He's bowling over. That's gone for four. Quinton Drea, he'll bowl. He'll also bowl one. Final over is going to come from. You got to love the comments. I mean, I mean, we've had we've had Jody Lawrence come and have a, a little bit of insight. And one of the things he said, he said, cricket is a real simple game. It's just us making it very very difficult for ourselves. And that was a moment there. We had Warwick go bowling over for four, and then they tried to change it up. Yes, you don't want to give a, a better chance to line someone up, but back himself here. That's hip, going to go past point. That ball is racing to the boundary. The field is trying to get there. That's excellent bit of fielding. Excellent bit of fielding. We saw it in the first innings. We saw it in the first innings where Cody never flung himself. And again, there's another fielder doing that there. Look at the replay. Diamonds, he lunges there. That's excellent fielding, is that? It's fine margins now. It's finer margins. So. He, he knows he needs to contribute. His overs didn't go quite according to plan. But now it's, it's what happens next. It's what the next delivery is all about. You might not have executed with the ball, but you still got to give a 100% in the field. Oh, ball, full toss, hit down the ground. There's Warren extra. He's going to come round. And here comes Marcus Faree. Here comes Marcus Faree. They get two again. We haven't seen a boundary for 14 deliveries. And that is what is just creating that gap between runs and balls. Victoria just putting the squeeze on right at the right time. 27 runs needed. 16 balls. Now the gamesmanship comes in. Now the gamesmanship playing on the minds. 83 for two. We are not focusing on that. All we're focusing on is the bottom right. 27 runs of 16 deliveries. That's up in the air. That's up in the air. Is it going to go all the way? Stober's underneath it. Stober can't get there. It's gone for six. It's gone for six. It was, it was like a volcano that was bubbling. It was bubbling. And it was about to explode. And that's exactly what Powerball Creek Club did. It wasn't the prettiest of shots. It was a hoik across the line. But he got enough willow on it. And it's been a much needed boundary. The first one in 15 deliveries. Is that the long handle teaspoon? Is that the long handle teaspoon by Cody Nevo? Oh, he's edged that. Oh, it's gone through the hands. Can you believe it? Sergio Pringle has dropped it. And they're going to come back for two. What a day he's having. What have you done? What have you done? You wanted a new batty in there, Victoria. He's right at the off the just didn't time his jump and it burst through the fingers come boys, come boys. unbelievable scenes here victoria Cricket club they just have to hold their head there's still two very important balls of this warwick over he sort of sweeps that he sweeps that there's the chase is on but it's going to go for four it's gone for four That's what happens when the drop catches him. Should have been back in the dugout. Instead, he's still there and he got down and bent at knee. Turned it away. What a much needed boundary. Nails are being chewed here. People are sitting with their hands underneath them. 15 runs of 13 deliveries. Cody, what an innings. You playing here for your team. 20 of 10 deliveries.
hit down the ground. They've just got to keep their heads here. Belleville Cricket Club, can you believe it? They were one win from their first four games. They find themselves in the playoff, and they are 12 deliveries away from playing in qualifier two. Can you believe it? Scorecard and everything revolves around Marcus Curry on top. He's got 40 of 19 and he's found a partner just at the right time in Cody Nivot. 21 of 11. Quentin Dreyer, he's going to take the ball now. You feel that he needs to take wickets to keep Victoria Cricket Club in the competition. Remember, this is an eliminator. Lose it and that's the end of your tournament. This over should just go for four. If this over goes for a little bit more than that. Even though Belleville, I still feel are very much favourites from this position with the amount of wickets still in hand. Dreyer, he's bowling to Cody Niva, the captain of Belleville. Here we go, penultimate over. That's in the air. That's in the air. Squeezed over point. The ball's going to go to the boundary. The ball's gone for four. And that brings up the boundary. Also brings up Belleville. Click it up 100. They have been dominant in this chase. And they're wanting to take it home now, possibly even with an over to spare. Say that, dominating, but I'm still feel Victoria have gifted them this. Their execution hasn't been good in the second innings by a long shot. Oh, no risk now. You see, no risk, and this is where the experience comes in. Dot ball, though. Ten runs needed. Ten balls. He's ramped it. He has ramped it. What an innings Cody Nivot has put together. He has gone for four again. And now then, we might as well start our car. Start the car, Bumble. Start the car. Cody Nivot has played a little bit of a dip here. He's come in at a crucial situation for Bumble. And he's one strike away from sending Belleville into qualifier two. So here they were dead and buried in this competition. Short ball picked up. He's hit that the long way. It's got huge. What a way to finish this match. What a performance these boys in Maroon have put together. Cody Nevo and Belleville Creek Club, they find themselves in qualifier two. They were dead and buried. One win from four. And look at this performance. That's been a great team effort by them. And now they are going to be up against Rondebos Creek Club tomorrow in that all-important qualifier two. What a game, Zaire. An absolute cracker, yeah. We thought 110, we thought it was going to be a really stiff challenge. It was going to be a tough chase. But instead, they've got over with an over to spare and some change to the Belleville boys. We've got to be, we've got to be honest with ourselves. And Victoria are going to look at themselves, especially in the second innings. And they have contributed heavily, heavily to Belleville getting across the line in that chase of 110. You don't mind getting beaten by a better side on the day. But when you beat yourself, that's the hardest ones to swallow. You can see Coach Sidek Davis. He's just looking very, very despondent there. The words in the changing room afterwards are going, Mate, we gave ourselves a chance and then we took it away. But those are, that's the words of a team that unfortunately won't be back. It's all about the winners, the men in maroon. They've come here and they've burgled a few victories to get here. Snuck through the back door. But they're now firmly in contention. They play Rondebosch tomorrow at 10 a.m. And they are, they want a place in the final against their neighbours, the host Durbanville Creek Club.
and welcome back here to the post-match presentation of this. It was the eliminator between Victoria Cricket Club, sponsored by Cricket Adder, and they were up against Belleville Cricket Club, sponsored by Bet Bricks, and it's Belleville Cricket Club that get through this eliminator and they'll make their way through to qualify two that will be happening tomorrow against Rondebos. So, first words I'll have is with Warren, apologies, not Warren, Marco Weingard, it was his brother, Marco, a lot to sort of get our teeth into. The first innings, you must have thought you had, an, or you did quite well, amassing 109. Yeah, runs on the board. Um, I think we just obviously let it slip in the field. Yeah, the second part of it was going to be the field. Your bowlings, your bowlers just didn't execute the, the plans there. Yeah, I mean, this game is a game of fine margins. Um, and if you're not going to be uh, on the money from the word go, in especially such a short format, uh, you're always going to come out short. Yes, you've got to find a way to keep calm, especially if you do come up someone that does hit boundaries. But I just feel the execution, and I think you guys maybe contributed to, to Balva crossing the line there as well. Yeah, like I said, I mean, I said to the boys, we need to stay calm in every situation. I mean, once you go for boundaries behind you, you need to be focused on the next ball. I'm sure you're going to take this with you, this T10 competition. It looks at the finer points of it, the batting, the bowling, and then you said the fielding as well, dropping a couple of catches. It really does cost the game. Yeah, I mean, phenomenal um, introduction to Cape Town cricket. Um, thanks to the T10 guys uh, for bringing it out there and exposing the boys to, to this format of the game. Um, and I mean, it can only benefit the guys going forward. Listen, thanks to Victoria and thanks for the entertainment you guys gave to us as well. Thank you, Eugene. That's the viewpoint of Marco Weingart, the captain of Victoria Cricket Club. We're going to hand now over to the man of the match, and that is a voucher from Sweet, uh, Sweet Spot Cricket. And that goes to Marcus Faree from Balva Cricket Club. Marcus, we, we spoke at the top of the show. That is yours, mate. Yes, that's that's not for me to keep unless we can, we can all share it later. But um, you said at the top of the show, you haven't really had the tournament that you were hoping for. But yeah, you stepped up in a, a vital game for Balva Cricket Club. Now, Eugene, uh, I think cricket's a very funny game. Uh, if it goes for you, you have to take it with both hands because it's not every day everything go comes out of the middle or drop catch you there and you can bat the whole time. So, yeah, you have to you have to grab it by the horns. Just a little bit into your team. You guys have really put a team performance together and you've fought, sort of battled your way through it. You only won one game out of four, but yet here yeah, you find yourself in qualify two tomorrow. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's uh, all about uh, the, the team morale and the, the, the friendships and the families that we build inside of Belleville. And that's, that's why we are where we are now. Yeah. Listen, well played today and well done and all the best tomorrow. Thank you very much, Eugene. That's the more words of Marcus Fourier. And now we're going to call on Cody Nivot. And certainly I'm going to keep growing and asking the same old question again. Cody, how did this turnaround come about? Because again, you were one win out of four games and yet you're going to go through to qualify two tomorrow. I think the boys just decided, you know what, it's time to wake up and smell the coffee. And, uh, I mean, I think the coffee is brewing right now, eh? No, you guys have really stepped up. At the halfway stage, did you still back yourself to get there? And you know it was going to be a hard four to get to 110, but you guys made it look very, very simple at the end. I think, obviously, we got off to a really good start. And we just decided we're going to go hard up front, the same thing. And then, I mean, like I always say, it's not how you start a game, it's how you finish the game. And I think we just finished really well. Yeah, Victoria probably also gifted you guys a few extra freebies as well, a couple of drop catches. But it's how you guys sort of capitalize on those moments. Well, yes, they gave us a lot of um, opportunities, but I think we gave them just as much. Mm. There was a lot of uh, mistakes in the field today from both sides, and I think the team that made the least mistakes won the game today. Well, you've gone on to tomorrow's game, another knockout game. You're playing Rondebosch Creek Club, probably a big game for you guys. Definitely. We obviously want to get some revenge on the Rondebosch team. They are a really good team, but we're the underdogs, and I think they should be afraid. Okay, so two two questions. One, are we going to see Kit, is it Kitty? Kitty, yeah, he's definitely going to be here tomorrow. <laughs> and the purple will be great? Oh, 100%. They're going to get the brandies flowing tomorrow. <laughs> Listen, go well tomorrow. All the best. Thank you. That's a view of this post-match presentation where Belleville Cricket Club have finally got through to the qualifier to beating Victoria Cricket Club here. They will be up against Rondebosch Cricket Club in an all-important qualifier two tomorrow to see who will beat, who will meet Durbanville Cricket Club in that final on Sunday.